I'm working on this piece for an exhibit at the Brevard Museum of Art. I'm doing an installation of paintings. It's for an exhibit called Naval Gazing, and it's an exhibit of eight Florida artists and eight non-Florida artists talking about their experiences of Florida. So I'm really focusing on the many years I've spent um, going to and coming from Florida and the changes I've seen since my early childhood. And one of the things I've seen that really distresses me is the whole beautiful native primordial landscape in Florida disappearing. So that's what my installation is about. What's native, what's non-native? How can we allow some of these exciting exotic plants in Florida but still keep what's beautiful and native and primordial and scrubby and spring-fed about the forests and the landscape of Florida? So this piece I'm working on is actually a live oak with a staghorn fern growing on it. And the staghorn fern is not from Florida, but the live oaks are native to Florida. We went to Course Crew Swamp in southwestern Florida and were able to walk the many miles of boardwalk exploring this untrammeled swamp that's been preserved in its natural state. And then we had the pleasure of interviewing Ed Carlson director of the sanctuary. Hey Ed. Hi Fran. Welcome to Corkscrew Swamp. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to meet you. We're here in Corkscrew Swamp in southwest Florida, an incredible nature preserve owned by Audubon to talk to him about Corkscrew Swamp. So I'm really curious how all of the native plants and the unique ecosystem that you have here feeds all of the animal and wildlife that you have here at the swamp. Yeah, well, first of all, this, this, the biological diversity here is incredible because this is where the temperate zone and the tropic zone mm -hmm. mix. Uh -huh. So we get all the temperate species and tropical. You'd have the same red maple that grows in Canada really? here with an orchid on it. Oh, it's, I love what they're talking about here. This is called a nursery log, this long fallen cypress tree. And they're saying life is eternal in a swamp, for as individual plants or animals cease to exist, they give life to others. Nothing is ever wasted. I love the idea that nothing's wasted and life feeds other life. I think that's so important for us to remember. These are strangler figs, and uh, birds plant a seed on the trunk, and the vines actually grow downward, not up from the ground. These are gonna make some incredible large paintings. Can't believe the amount of inspiration I've gotten today. Here in Corkscrew Swamp. I'm here in Cocoa, Florida with Carrie Ruder, owner and operator of NatureWise, a nursery for Florida native plants. We're gonna to talk to her about what she does here in Florida with native plants. So Carrie, tell us a little bit about what you do here at the nursery. Okay, well I have a Florida native nursery, which means I grow native plants for both residential landscapes, commercial landscapes, um, and even schools to a limited extent. Primarily what we're doing is we're trying to grow plants that grow well here in this part of Florida and are also easy to use in the landscape so they don't require a lot of extra care. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing a lot of education with our customers to show them, okay, these are the different plants that you can grow in your yard, um, each plant requiring slightly different growing conditions. So it's a lot of working with our customers, whether it be a resident or a small business or a school, to find out you know, what they want to do in their property, whether it be to create a, a small, you know, a wildflower garden or a butterfly garden or create some privacy, find out what it is they want to accomplish and then help them choose the plants that are going to help them accomplish that task. It was fun helping the students at Endeavor Elementary unload native plants from Carrie's van. Here, Jerry, I'll go with you. Let's go over to the arbor. We're going to take that over to the arbor. That's where you're going to plant it. 
They have a very innovative gardening program there, which I think is wonderful. I wish I'd been exposed to something like that when I was a child. They're really teaching them about how to grow plants, edible plants, things that they can use. I think it, it'll influence their families also. Yeah, on all these beds, they're pretty well filled up now. Mm -hmm. They would still add a few things to them every year. You know. And the kids had an opportunity to do a butterfly release while we were there. You don't have to be sneaky to tear the envelope for you. Just open it Look at how beautiful he is. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. They have a garden that's specifically designated for butterflies. It has pollination and food plants for them. See, they're, they're gentle little creatures. They would never hurt you. And it was very special watching them experience that. The artist's process is not just a visual medium. Zach Bell, award-winning chef de cuisine at Café Bolu in Palm Beach, uses food from local growers, fishermen, and ranchers to create his mouth-watering culinary masterpieces. All right, cool. So you have a beautiful display that you set up here for us. Can you talk to us a little bit yep. why you selected what you have here? Um, well, I selected what we have here because that's uh, what my producers are giving me locally, right at this, this moment in time. Uh, right now it's kind of, you know, it's December, but for Florida, the, the growing season is just starting. So we're getting all kinds of the great summer produce that you think of classically, but for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm making pieces about things that steal my soul away a little bit. I'm not making anything pretty. And I'm starting to rebel against that. Oh, I interesting. want to find the beauty in, in, in the idea. Um, so See, I have to, yeah, that's interesting because I have to find some kind of beauty in what I do. Although, I mean, even what you're starting here, I can see there's some destruction going on, and yet there's something very uh, beautiful in all the texture and what's going on. So where you find beauty is very subjective, you know. It is. I mean, this started with... Talk, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to hear more about this. Yeah. This body is called um, Beautiful Catastrophes, mm -hmm. and it started with the hurricane in uh, New Orleans, the destruction was thorough. It was complete. Um, a lot of the pictures you would see on TV, there was nothing left but rubble, just complete devastation. But if you looked past the reporter and the crumpled buildings, you'd see this gorgeous day. Mm -hmm. Just this beautiful surf and this perfect cerulean blue sky. And it's like, Minus the devastation on the ground, it is another perfect day in paradise. Mm Closer to these over here. I want to get more detail. Many years. What has this tree seen going on beneath its branches that would make our little petty concerns just a microcosm in the whole picture? I know it might sound a bit silly, but that's why I love to hug trees. I find that they give me messages. And this one was telling me not to worry about my petty little daily concerns when it's seen so much pass beneath its branches. I think there's a real wisdom in that, not to get caught up in the day to day. To know that there's a bigger picture that's way, way beyond our comprehension. I mean, that's what I find fascinating about nature, is that something will be just beautiful or interesting or unusual, but then it usually has a purpose. I think I'm gonna see what this tree feels like. This might be a tree that needs to be hugged. Ugh. I know it's silly, but I love to hug trees. I 
think they're sentient beings. Hmm, long day in the subtropical heat. Boy, is the light beautiful this time of day, though. Just exquisite.